In this edition of Careers That Matter, I'm joined by Christine Kennedy, the president of Wood Fiber LNG, a fascinating uh, liquefied natural gas project that's uh, in House Sound just, just next to Squamish. Well, technically, I guess it is in Squamish. Christine, welcome. Thank you. So you're the president of a natural resource uh, production facility to supply Asia, primarily, with liquefied natural gas. What does your job look like uh, as president of, at the moment, what is in essence a construction project? It's a fascinating job, honestly. Like, um, and it's a little bit of everything. Um, it's like the regulatory process um, for the project, like all of the permissions and approvals for each stage of the work as it advances. Um, it's the like government and community relations um, part of that. Critically importantly, it's like the relationship with um, First Nations, Squamish Nation, like paramountly, they're like right there in the community with us, but also Tsleil-Waututh Nation and other indigenous groups that are like part of that territory. Um, it involves like planning and you know wow. like sorting out complications that inevitably come up in like a project of this scale, and working with like colleagues all across the company in fields like you know, engineering and um, actual site like construction and administration and things like that. And, but you also report to uh, an organization that is international. Yes. So you've got that relationship that you're also uh, in charge of. Absolutely. Uh, it's a multifaceted job. So do you have such a thing as a typical day? Never a typical day in this and that's what makes it interesting. Um, you like you come into a role like this and like every major project um, is a sequence of issues to solve um, and you know like a creative problem solving exercise almost every day and not just for me for a like for vast team of people that like works on it as well um, directly within the company and like within the like contractor and subcontractor like group that supply us. So what you talked about is like you've got internal responsibilities. So you've got teams that are reporting to you, but then you also have external relations as well. What would you say is the divide in your time between those two different, uh, quite different roles? Um, it, it's always variable. So you know, like coming up with a percentage split, hard to say. Um, in a task like this, making sure that like the consultation and engagement side of the work um, happens and happens very effectively um, is certainly a key focus. Um, I have superb people that do that work, but um, making sure that like the community and stakeholders remain involved, um, ensuring that Squamish Nation is like um, informed of, involved in, uh, like all of the things that we're doing from environmental work to like procurement opportunities for nation owned businesses to like employment opportunities. Um, the company's just started an incredibly cool like um, 15 member indigenous like operations trainee cohort um, that's being trained at the Squamish Nation Trains and Trades and Training Center um, with BCIT instructors. Um, preparing to be like LNG operators when the like facility is built and ready to operate. Um, so going through power engineering like training and um, like you're always yeah. like um, working to make sure that we are as involved as possible with the community and the nation, um, like with all of our regulators, which of course also includes a, like a dimension of Squamish Nation um, and like that we're keeping people informed in like how the project is going forward. So how many days a week do you work and how Seven. many hours a day? <laughs> Seven and a lot, a lot. Yeah, you have to have a lot of energy for this. Yeah, it, it does take, um, it takes high energy. It takes enthusiasm for what we're doing. Um, I think that it really takes like enthusiasm for, um, you know, like the economy in BC and contributing to like people's standard of living. That's the thing that like really drives me in a lot of this. I mean, of course, um, you know, I mean, I want to achieve all of the tasks that are before us, but I know that it creates jobs and it creates like um, net government revenues and that, that through that it like 
contributes to all of the important issues of society today, like housing, healthcare, um, education, and other public services. You know, one of the audiences for this Careers That Matter are young people. Yep. Uh, we want to be able to give them a sense of what a job like yours looks like. But they're also probably going, well, how did you become that person? Because I don't think I can go to university and say I'm going to get a degree that's going to allow me to be the president of um, a liquefied natural gas uh, construction project come an operating facility. When you f left you know, secondary education, where'd you go? Like, what, what was your career path? Um, you know, like I went, uh, like, and I went into like, um, ec like business studies, um, you know, like At university, policy. did yeah. you? Yeah. Um, and, you know, like from there, spent some time in government, um, spent some time in other like major companies, um, you know, like had the opportunity to be involved in some like incredibly cool opportunities over time. Um, like uh, careers like mine tend to, you know, like go in and out of like a government, like public policy orbit. Um, and that's what makes you able to like find the path through um, complex regulatory environments and like changing circumstances in like in British Columbia or in Canada and like emerging policy priorities that are important. They help you to understand what the like the lay of the land is. But, um, you know, like through that had the opportunity to be involved in like developing the like uh, lumber market in China, for example. Um, for BC based companies or? Yes. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, years ago, I worked uh, directly for like then Forest Minister um, Mike De Jong, um, ah. and had the opportunity to develop the programming that, like, led to um, the development of the, the market uh, for BC forest products in China. Like, exceptional opportunity to um, understand how like international business is done, um, how market development is done, um, and what the world needs from Canada. So from there, where did you go? Like, like that's an interesting place to have been and then start to develop that international experience. And I can see how it would start to set you up, especially if you're going to be producing an export facility with your main market in, in China. So after you've been doing that with uh, then Minister uh, Deong, where did your career take you next? Um, I worked uh, for a time in like a forest products association. Um, like, and like then I've like done subsequent stints in government as well. So um, my last assignment in government was as like associate deputy minister um, in like former premier, like uh, John Horgan's premier's office, working alongside um, deputy minister to the premier, Don Wright. So um, having the opportunity to do things like, you know, develop, like economic strategy for the province and um, and see the path forward for like all sectors of our economy, including this one. Um, so that's probably why they like why the company was like interested in me um, when they were looking for somebody in this position. When you think about taking on some of these roles, uh, with each one of them, I'm sure you looked at it and went, okay, I don't have direct experience there. And some people would go, so therefore, I don't want to take it on. But you said, bring it on. How come? What was it that um, moved you forward and gave you the confidence that you could uh, to, uh, rise to the needs of that position? Um, I think it's a combination of being motivated by like what impacts British Columbians, by understanding what creates jobs, um, what creates like good paying, sustainable jobs that like last um, often, you know, like over a person's career. Um, like that matters to me and the ability to shape those instruments matters. Um, you know, like I've lived in like the small towns in British Columbia and large ones. And so I have that like real connection to um, people's experience through economic cycles uh, and how important it is to like sustain the flow of government revenue to keep government programs going mm -hmm. and that you can only do that through investment. 
Um, like that doesn't come through other mechanisms. Whatever like sector of the economy it's in, um, like government revenue has to be created and jobs have to be there like to support people. Um, and that's, that's how an economy works. So um, that's what motivates me. It like, it makes it, um, each of these things are challenges rather than, you know, like um, daunting tasks. You figure out how rather than like if, mm -hmm. um, because the outcome and because the people matter. So one question that I ask each of our guests is, what would you say is a personality trait that you believe was important in helping to continually move your career forward uh, as you know you, you've gone from position to position? Um, well, I think the ability to see like innovative and creative solutions, big picture thinking, um, like and the resilience to keep going. None of these things are easy. Um, you know, like the solutions aren't always there immediately in front of you. You have to try and try again and like move the dial. Um, but uh, if you have those, you know, like core traits of um, resilience and the like ability to try and to see a big picture and to know what motivates you. Um, you know, of course, we're all motivated by like, you know, I'm doing the very best job for our employer. Um, meeting our fiduciary obligations and things like that, but like, but you have to have a deep internal motivation for like what makes you want to do it every day. Um, that's what does it for me. It's like impacts on people. It's like um, being able to like make sure that like um, all of the history of you know, like indigenous like erasure, um, you know, like inability to access like the like means of the economy that like that we change that that we really do economic reconciliation um and that we you know like we address the problems of our society um murdered and missing indigenous women and girls has been a significant like driver for me um not just because it's like a policy priority but like because it's an incredibly important thing to do like how like that continued for as long as it did, um, I don't know. And you know, like that's like shocking and horrifying, but like we're here now. And so like it gave me the opportunity to like, you know, gather an incredible group of like Squamish nation, Swahilatooth like nation women and um, chart mm -hmm. a path forward, at least, at least for us. Wow. Um, the willingness and the drive to solve problems, I think is like what matters in tasks like this. Well, thank you for giving us a glimpse into your very complicated job and your career path, um, because you serve as a role model for many young people who go, I wanna be like you. Um, I hope that that's, you know, like something that, you know, like people are, are interested in. There are so many careers for like young people in this industry in public policy, like in jobs that really make a lasting difference um, to whatever truly drives them. Thank you. Thank you.